Hey, good afternoon, good morning, good night. Welcome back to VIOC in Action. This is your boy, Mr. Leon Hunt, better known as Mr. Rice Books One Time for the One Time Can Cool Can Quench. Welcome back to the show. This is your hour long radio show, sports show from the Olympic Committee. On the show today, we're going to have a very special, well, we got a very special guest because guess what? It's one of those sports that I like to partake in, and I had the pleasure of playing uh, with this particular athlete. And as you know, on the show, just like any other show, um, you always I, I try my best to at least try every single sport that it is. And this just so happened to be one of my favorite sports of the whole day. So as people know, back in the day, you know that song goes, basketball is my favorite sport. So today we're talking about basketball with my guest, Mr. X, X-Man or Xavier Richards. What's up, man? All right, man. Hey, welcome to VIOC in action. Like I say, this is your first time on the show, and I just wanted to get a chance to talk to you because people know you on the court, but I don't think they know you outside of that. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is David Richards. Um, I'm a guest. I'm here on the show, ready to answer some questions and let you know about my life. All right. So let me ask you. Let me ask you, Mr. X. Wait. So so wait. So wait. So everybody call you. Xavier, or they call you X or X Man, how does it go? Um, most people call me X, and I'm just simple X. All right, but X, you can see this here. All right, X, so just two hands crossed, boom, X. So X marks the spot. X marks the spot. So, as we talking about X, right, and you know how we got X's and O's. So, when we, so when you in the game and coach give you a play and he writes an X on the board. Do you do you act? Do you tell a coach like, Coach, you want me to be all five of them, man? Or you be like, Which one is me? <laughs> uh, usually it's that, that, you know, usually for exes and not the board, no. Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right, all right. Now, because I gotta see, because I know, like, when we write up some plays, you gotta put the X's and O's in there and bam, bam, bam. X, X and O's are numbers that are positioned for your client. All right, so, well, so tell, so you could tell us now. So you do play basketball for our national team. Um, so what's your position? Uh, I play the guard, sometimes one. Mm -hmm. All right, so you are P <laughs> so you play PG yeah. for us. When when was your first national game? I would say. Well, how well how old are you now? Twenty six. Alright, so twenty six. So when was your first game? When, when like when was your first national game or, or your first opportunity my, to play with the national first, team? Okay, my first opportunity was in two thousand fourteen. Like my sophomore year of college. Mm -hmm. Um got the invite from Sophie Richard to come to training camp in St. Croix to come um see if I can make the team and I did it. So it was a two week training camp and about 20, 25 guys there trying to make the team, and I was fortunate to be one of those guys to make the team. Okay, so this was back in 2014. Let me see, 2014. I try to remember those dates. 2014 was a CAC year, if I'm correct. That was CAC games in Mexico, um, Veracruz, right? We qualified in total at We went to the BVI to qualify. Okay, okay, so, so, all right, so these are around those same, all right, so you guys had a qualifier in BVI, um, so you guys could be able, this was the qualifier for you guys to be able to be part of the games? Yes. Okay, so, back in, so wait, all right, so let's back up a little bit more. All right, so this was your sophomore year, what school did you go to? Tennessee State University. All right, Tennessee State, is that, is, is that, let me see, Tennessee State, that's the one in Middleton? That's Middleton? In Nashville. In right? Nashville. Ten, ten minutes away from Vanderbilt. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, so how how did you enjoy? So now this is your. I mean, this is like your first time national team, big university, everybody. So like, how you feel when you was at school? Then I mean, did you feel like the big man on campus? Uh nah. I don't. I don't let things get in my head. I just try to keep a I level head and just go through the days and try win the day every day. You know, that's that's my focus. Just getting through the day. And I was in college, it was a lot harder than people think. Mm -hmm. Going to school and, and playing um, basketball, you know, like your your daily regimen is waking up about 5, five to 5.30 in the morning for practice at 6. Then um, 
to some six throughout eight o'clock. Class, wait, study hall, another practice, then still have to finish your homework. Right. And still have to have time for yourself to even try to enjoy your little time you have for yourself before you have to wake up again in the next <laughs> six, seven hours. No, so it was real tough, but no yeah so i always tell people as myself um when when you're a student athlete you do everything that everybody else do plus more and the students as regular just civilians at school they don't get a chance to do everything that we don't do so we got like two three different lives at school and you gotta be able to keep up your grades and some people of course uh, work as well as they go to school and still participate in sports um, right. so that's, so somebody I will always say who do sports in, in college are, are, they do really good at time management because for one, they had to manage their whole time with inside university. So, and then they got passed because if you don't have a, um, if I'm correct, depending on the university, if you don't have a 2.0, you ain't going to be on that team for much more longer. Yeah, two five I think now. Oh, like see, that. you see yeah. this? So, so, so back, so back in my day as an old man, um, it was a two point oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah, that's and cool. A lot, of, hmm? a lot of a lot of regular students used to always like say like, "Oh, we have it so good." Like, I wish I was playing more. I said, "I'll give you one week with us. I bet you wouldn't make it." You know? so. Exactly. Like I think back in my day of going to school. It was, I mean, I had a, I had a great time. I went to Florida and um, found you. And um, as, as, as we all know, you know, HBCU, as we all know, that school is very known for activities because yeah, yeah. don't nothing stop there at all. And it's in Florida for one, um, as a running track and field being up and down campus. And I think everybody have this thing on their campus called like the, the, I was what call a yard, you know, which is be like student activities. That will always the, the yeah, place, yeah. you know? So you'll go there, and you know all the athletes that was on campus, you'll be like, yeah, man. You always see them either going there just before practice or after practice, and you always see us like, like everybody, always, all athletes always look sluggish because we're yeah. just so tired. Yeah. All right, so, when, so when, you, when, when you was back in school, when you first got there as a freshman, how was that? Like, how was that change? Uh, coming in uh, from wait, cause you you're you're from Saint Thomas, right? Yeah, from Banner, Banner Saint Thomas. Right? Okay, so yeah. Banner. Okay, so so how how was that transition from high school going into university? Uh just more mental focus. You know, you don't have nobody pushing you as much unless it's um the athletic department. But basically, um, just just. Having everything on a timely, getting everything done time on a timely manner, uh, pushing yourself. Because if you don't do it, nobody ain't telling you nothing. So you, you're drawn on your own, you know. So that's just that's just the thing I have to focus on. Just being more focused mentally and getting my work done. Yeah. So so as as you say, so once so you knew this already from going into university as a freshman. That's like, look. If I'm going to be in school, I got to make sure my time management is correct. And if I ain't getting these grades good, I'm not going to be able to participate in the particular event, um, the sport that I actually came to school for. Um, right. So coming from high school into university, though, how was the change with inside of the sport in itself? Because now, say, for instance, in your high school, like, sure, you was probably the man in your school. So now when you go into college, it's everybody's like you too because everybody's not number one in your college right, right, right. from day school. Right. So how did you deal with that? Oh, it was a lot of, a lot of competitiveness in practice. And um, our, coach, our coach was really a young coach. Like um, during times in practice, like if we, if we practice good, he, changed, he would change the lineup for that one player like for a game like practice um convert over to the game so even if you started the game before that don't mean we're going to start the next game he, he goes like oh practice how are you doing practice so if you're doing a, a, a trash job in practice you're always starting lineup so it's just every day we're just competitive you know trying to beat the other guy 
and he always got the eagle in the sky, which is the camera. So after after um, practice, we always in the room watching film to see what we did wrong or see what he missed or whatever. So we had to try to be perfect in practice every day. All right. So well, a lot of a lot of a lot of people don't have the benefit of quote unquote. Well, I mean, I well okay. So I know when you record practices. Well, people record games. When you record practices, that's a whole different level then because, you know, it's like, okay, in the game, you play a certain way. Now, practice, let me see how you play or how your body line. Or, you know, in practice, people like to goof around because yeah. it's practice. But now, when you notice that you're being recorded at practice and everybody, and you know the camera don't lie, that now, don't now everybody's responsible for their own actions while they're there yeah. at practice, which is cool. So, I think within your circumstances that since you guys was being recorded at practice, it made you guys focus on men and try to take care of business. Um, right, right. Which, which probably led to you say how competitive it was because now you got like, hey, the lineups was changed. So whoever did good this week or whatever it was, this person wanted it more and this person got their opportunity and their chance to start the next game coming up. Yeah, that's exactly what it I, I I could take that. So, what was your most memorable moment during your university time? Oh man, oh, that's a hard one. Yeah, that's like really... okay, okay. Well, athletic, um, athletically. Yes, yes, yes. Athletically. So, all your years of running ball, um, I'm pretty sure you had some game winners. I'm pretty sure you lost some game winners. And I'm pretty sure you just didn't even get to play some of them. So, a memorable moment could be both positive or negative or life lessons learned during your years of basketball in university. One of one of the biggest things I remember is getting blown out by Virginia, number one team in the country. Uh, <laughs> you, like, UVA? I like 30 points was bad. So, you got to play UVA, got blown out. Um... Was this the same year when they when when they went to um when they went to yep. Final Four? 2015, 16. It was 2015, 16 year. Okay, so when this they were one in the country, and this would have like, been yeah. your your um junior year. Junior, yep. Okay, so a year just before you graduate, you get to play with the number one school and team from the ACC, um, and and I I, I and playing with, with um playing Virginia. What did you learn from that game, though? I mean, you get blown up by by thirty, yes, but at one point in the game it was zero zero, of course. But um, yeah. like, but to play a caliber team like that, like you had to take something from the game. I mean, just the chemistry they had, it was just crazy. You know, um, I, I know they've been running together for probably three, two, three years, so that's I I couldn't even explain it. It was just different. Right. Felt like we were in a different type of climate. Uh -huh. The air was a little thinner. It was, it was just, you know, not wrecking, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, UVA. Well, All right, so when, and that's in a thing. Where is UVA? You, yeah. So, so when, so when you play the team, you understand the different levels now. Yeah. Uh, basketballs, yeah. Um, the level that's played in college. Because I used to think that no matter what school you went to, the school was a school you play some sports. It was great, but then I realized yeah. they had a division in the whole um, for university for a whole purpose. Because as yeah. you know, we got NAIA's, we got Division three, two, and one. Um, yeah. And you know, the closer you get to Division one, it's supposed to be ideally this is where you get the top recruiters at, and then going down right. the bar to two, three, and NAIA. Um, I myself, I started out at um, a Division two school at, uh, uh, what I go, uh, Virginia State. I uh, went to Virginia State in Petersburg, Virginia. And it was cool. But the problem was, is that in track and field, like, all right, so in, in, in Division two, you just had your, you, you had your conference and then you qualify for, um, for nationals, right? Yeah, yeah. In, Div yeah. in Division one. You had your conference, and you had regionals, which was a, a second championship, you would say. Um, that right there, it just cut everybody in half. 
And then you got yeah. the national championship that, that you could go against all the schools or all the conferences from east to west. So, yeah, so you, have, you have to basically win your conference to play in March Madness. Right, right. You got to be able to punch the ticket, the Cinderella. Yeah, yeah you got to be able to punch your ticket in and, um, and, and, and try your best not to get knocked out in wrong one. Right. So... Right. In two thousand, so in your in your sophomore year, sorry, in your um, no, junior year, in your junior year, was that the first time you ent- you entered into the um, March Madness? Oh no, we didn't. That was that was that was a um, that was a season uh, season game. It wasn't March Madness. We played them early in the season. Oh, oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. We gotcha, played gotcha. like most of the biggest schools early in the season. All right, so you still okay? So this is just a regular um season regular game. Season game. So did yeah. you ever get your chance to play in March Madness? Almost, almost my senior year. Okay, so lost. this is twenty sixteen seventeen. So yeah. two years. Yeah. Two yes. No, uh, Virginia was fourteen sixteen. Okay. Um, senior year was fifteen sixteen. Okay, yeah. okay, I got you. And and which year was the closest that you was to um to punching the 15, ticket? 16, 16, my senior year. Okay, senior year, and um, which game was that, and what happened in that game? Let me tell you, Leon, we were number we were number one in the conference, number one in our conference because um the season polls came out. They had us like number five. My coach was hot. <laughs> he said, "You don't see our team," and he was like. Ain't no way to disrespect them up like that. So we won that. Con- we won our conference. Okay. Um, we played in a tournament to go to March Madness, and we lost to the eight seed up by twenty with like four minutes left. I don't know how we lost. But we lost that game. And and, and who was y'all playing against? We were playing against Simo. I mean, yeah, Simo. I think that was East Missouri. Okay, okay. So there was the eighth seed with inside. They came back four minutes. Y'all was up by twenty. Yeah. And, um, about eight. Yeah. So what you? So your message, at least in this segment, is to tell everybody, well, hey, you guys don't start celebrating too early because it's still a lot of time on the clock. Right, right, right. All right, well, all right. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. We were rushing in, in, in the final minutes, you know. But, that's, so that's in the past, you know? yeah, but okay. So, so coming from the game you learned from UVA, um, what what in that game did you think that that you contributed to why you guys um, well why you guys took a L? <laughs> yeah, it was just better. That, that, that's just the overall thing. They were better, or they wanted it more? Because if you guys are up by twenty and a team come out with last four minutes. It means that you guys are probably looking at this team like, what? We we gonna win? Oh, you talking about you talking about the tournament or Virginia? I no no not not Virginia. I know that man was good. Okay. I talking about the oh. tournament, right? Okay, no, we were the best team, but it just yeah, the rest. I, I'll see the rest did that. Okay. They had the, they had the oldest coach in in, in college in in our um, conference, and he was about to retire. Um, and it's uh, predominantly white. Conference, mm-hmm. and we were like the only HBC in our conference, so it was crazy. All right, so you, so not just one thing took an effect. You thought it was just a, no. a couple of things, just no. being in that moment. That was the right. game, yeah. and just so happened, they just they had they you y'all had the shot end of the stick. Yes, basically. Okay, we could take that. So you graduate then, um, after you graduate, this would have been your second year in no being able to um represent the Virgin Islands on a national team. What happened right. from, well so what what happened after you graduate? Um got an agent, was working out for about eight to nine months, got a deal in um Dominica okay. Played for the Virgin Islands again. Okay, uh, wait, wait, all right, all right. So we just graduated. This is what, 2006, 16? Oh, yeah, 16, 17, yeah. Okay, wait, all right. So I'll tell you what. We're going to come back in the next segment. We're going to get straight okay. into that. I'm going to be good to go. Guys, we're coming back with another quick commercial break in VIOC in action with your boy over here, Xavier Richards.
Hey, welcome back to VIOC Action. We're over here live with my boy Xavier Riches. Letting us all uh, know how he got to where he is today. The man, the man, the be the man, X man. No matter what happened, the man on the court doing his thing, and it's all good, man. Sex. Yep. All right, man. So, like you said, before that break, that you just graduate school, and then you have another national, a national opportunity, um, a nas- another oh, national God. opportunity to play for our national team, right? Yeah, Tell us about that. Okay, so almost a almost a year after I graduated, um, got another call from Virgin Islands Federation to play in another window, and this was to go to the to the Dominican Republic. So we got we got our uh, invitation. We flew to um, Florida, trained for a while, uh, went down to the Dominican Republic. I just been before that I've been working out. Countless, countlessly, just in the gym every day, twice a day, working out, just getting myself or staying prepared for the next opportunity. Are you working out here in the Virgin Islands, or are you working out here? No, I was still in Tennessee. Okay, you're still in Tennessee. All right. Nashville. I was still in Nashville, Tennessee. So, um, fast forward, we got to Dominican Republic. We played. Let me see the team. We played Bahamas. Dominican Republic and Canada. So in that window, I put up about 11 points against like all uh, professional guys, NBA guys, like 11 and four. I was averaging, and after like one, after the Dominican Republic game, an agent came straight to the locker room and got me. Wanted to speak to me and the other guy on my team, and we signed with him right there. And like a week later, I had a job. To the Dominican Republic. Okay, okay, all right. So, so this year, this was 2000, you say 17, 18, or 16, 17? Yeah. All right, so you finally get a big break to what a lot of athletes will, well, here's, so here's, so here's, here's like how I like to do the math. Every, everybody, of course, get a great, well, they get a chance to go to college, they play, right. it's amazing, but most people college, most people careers finish as soon as they graduate. In college, right? right, right. So yeah. no, say I I would say something more of like maybe ten percent of athletes across the board, college wise, get a chance to move on to the next thing. Which now we're talking about semi pro, right? Um, no professional. All right, so we talking professional straight straight in from you from university. We go on professional. So now yeah. being professional. You're among a very small amount of numbers that now I'm pretty sure that one, all of these athletes was pretty good at their college or the league that they just came from. And so they were pretty good. So now you got more competition because now you're getting paid for it. So now, you know, remember how you used to be in the gym and then people be like, man, I ain't playing so hard because I ain't getting paid for it. Right. So now you actually is getting paid for it. So now tell us about Tell us about this because not a lot of athletes get a chance to play professional and actually get paid for it. So tell us what the whole, well, first you, um, tell us how you felt signing, how the league was, and how things were when you get paid to run ball to do something that that, that you love. I mean, that, that's, that's what I've been working towards my whole life, you know. So it was a great feeling to like tell my parents, I don't know that to sign a professional contract, you know, so... But it's still a business, you know, so as I prepared and I went down there, um, I was the only import. In that league, in the Dominican Republic, it's only one import. And the others are like locals and, yeah, different uh, people from, I mean, they played in, they played in the States, but they're from the Dominican Republic. So I had a translator, one translator, everyone else was Spanish. Um... It was just a, a, a crazy change to, um, from moving like to the U.S. to the Dominican Republic for a few months I was there, and um, it was a great feeling. Though you know, I, I, I felt loved, and the team I played for, I played for um, Club Campbellin in Hiwe. Okay. And basically, we get paid weekly. Um, food, everything's taken care of, hotel or wherever we stay. 
transportation, everything was taken care of while we were getting paid. So it's a good feeling not to spend money while making money. So, um, so it was real tough. The competition was real tough. Like every day, it was it was like a, a death battle in in the BR. Like and they they needed me every single place. Like because because you, you know. So wait, so be, well, all right. So we in the league now, right? Um, how yeah. many teams? How many teams was was in a league in DR? Uh, let's say about ten. 